our world is now more connected than ever before. Trips across the globe that would have taken days now take hours. The total world population keeps growing. And with cities crowded, the majority of the population is now in an urban setting for the first time in history. Now, what would happen to our world if something limited our interaction, our travel? If a deadly virus emerged and it could spread between humans? Well, this is our reality, and it spreads like wildfire. At the time of this video, there are 49 million confirmed COVID cases, with 1.2 million confirmed deaths. Entire countries locking down, airplanes grounded, communities panicked, economies crashing, hysteria, blame, isolation, distancing, conspiracy, and divide. But science, science tells us we have hope. Something that can help stop the spread. Something simple that can help protect everyone. Something that each and every single one of us has the capability of doing. Science says we need to wear face masks as they are our most effective frontline defense at limiting the spread of COVID-19. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Masks? You're joking, right? How could this piece of fabric protect anyone? I mean, the virus is so tiny, it could probably just pass right through here. I'm not buying your story. Oh. Um, hmm. This is awkward. Uh, here, how about this? Let's take a step back together and look at how COVID-19 even spreads. Well, at this point, we've all heard about COVID-19, a respiratory disease caused by the SARS COVID-2 virus. But many of us may be less familiar with how it spreads. So how exactly does COVID-19 spread from one person to another? Well, the main transmission route for this virus is through respiratory droplets passed in close contact interactions. This means the virus is found within an infected person's nose or mouth in small liquid particles. It is passed on by these particles and it can enter other susceptible surfaces that are within a certain distance, which is usually less than one meter. The liquid particles range in size from small, known as aerosols, to large, known as respiratory droplets. This means that daily interactions such as face-to-face -face conversations or coughing, sneezing, or even simply breathing can result in virus transmission from one person to another. An individual infected with the virus will transmit it to approximately three other people if the droplets fall into their mouth, nose, or eyes. Aerosol transmission can also occur in certain situations or settings. Specifically, it can occur in crowded, indoor, or poorly ventilated areas where an infected person has spent long periods of time. Okay. I can see how COVID is transmitted through droplets, but you still haven't explained how masks help stop this. All right. Well then, let's first talk about what face masks are and the different types. Face masks can be classified into three different types. Type one, certified masks. These are medically approved masks that uphold specific government regulations, certifications, and standards. In the US, these standards are implemented by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, AKA the CDC, and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NOISH. An example for this would be an N95 respirator mask. Type two non-certified medical masks. These masks are not medically certified, but approved as regulated medical devices by other agencies. 
For instance, the loose-fitting disposable medical masks, which in the U.S. are approved by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. Type 3, homemade masks. These are masks which are typically made out of fabric or cloth, but their quality cannot be guaranteed by any governmental or medical organization. Okay, so there's different types, but how do they work? Well, face masks play two key roles in preventing the transmission of COVID-19. First, masks affect the flow of turbulent gas cloud formation and the emission of respiratory droplets containing COVID. What this means is that face masks limit the airflow that can pass through them and they catch the droplets from our mouth and nose. Airflow that is produced by coughing or sneezing is blocked or redirected. This allows for airborne infection control. Second, masks also have the ability to effectively filter viral particles, both in the form of aerosols and even larger respiratory droplets. Simply put, by wearing a face mask, you significantly decrease the risk of spreading and contracting COVID-19. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it now. So, the masks, they catch the droplets that carry COVID, and they also stop airflow that help launch the droplets forward. Okay. But you know, now I'm left wondering, are they even effective at doing that? Well, Wearing a mask is an extremely cost-effective strategy that can be implemented without dramatically altering current social practices. It is a preventative measure that decreases the spread of COVID, and day by day, more and more countries are recommending or implementing mandatory mandates to wear masks in public. The efficacy of certified and medical masks is undeniable they can effectively reduce virus loads. Certified and medical masks can prevent the transmission of the virus from one person to another. Wearing a mask can flatten the epidemic curve by reducing transmission risk, overall virus production rates, and general infection attack rate. Although every mask significantly reduces cough pressure, it is recommended to wear certified masks since they are more effective. However, any mask is better than no mask, and they all reduce the risk of transmission significantly. When masks are available to everyone, and everyone is willing to wear them, there is a 57% projected decrease in the reproduction rate of COVID-19. The effectiveness of different commercial masks can range from 40 to 60% while the reduction rate is 99% for a Noish certified N95 type respirator. A hypothetical model for the states of Washington and New York shows that if 50 to 80% of the population wears the type 1 certified masks, this could prevent 17 to 45% of projected deaths and decrease the peak daily death rate by 34 to 58% in these states. A study that included 198 countries shows that the countries which had government regulations or standard cultural norms in favor of masks had fewer deaths overall. Okay, you make a lot of good points, but I'm still kind of on the edge. And for me, seeing is believing. Well, in that case, here, try this out at home and let me know what you think. Grab yourself a lighter or a candle and light it. Now blow it out. <sighs> Easy, right? Let's try that again, but this time let's put on a medical mask. Light the flame and let's blow it out. <sighs> Not so easy, right? Hopefully this little experiment helps you visualize what we discussed in this video. Thanks for watching and stay safe.